Hello and welcome to City Focus. I'm Diane Gonzalez. On Monday, January 17th, the nation will observe the 24th Annual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And here in Lincoln, the day will include the 16th Annual Youth Rally in March to celebrate King's legacy. Joining me to talk about the event that day are three people who have been very um, involved in the planning efforts. Sandy No is the planning committee chair and she is a Lincoln High senior. Marla Overstreet is on the planning committee as well and she's also a Lincoln High senior. And Pete Ferguson is the youth development coordinator for federal programs at Lincoln Public Schools. Thank you all very much for being here today. Thank you. P Pete, I know you've been involved a long time. This year is kind of uh, special. It's the first year since the passing of the event's founder, the late Leola Bullock. Tell us how this all got started. Well, um, like you said, it is always a special event, but this year we think it'll have some added meaning with the recent loss of Dr. Dr. Bullock, who was the founder in 1993. She kind of, you know, when she calls people to do something, people jump and respond. And the unique part about this was that she asked um, some adults to get some youth together and said, we need to instill in our youth the understanding of the contributions that Reverend Dr. King gave. And so in 93, she got a group of young people together and they put together the first annual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Youth Rally in March and actually marched to the steps here from down uh, from the university and here had a program on the steps of the, of the city county building. And it gave the I Have a Dream speech, I believe uh, Mr. Johansi Christie, who's now um, an attorney here in town, <laughs> gave that speech. Um, Sarah Bartek, a student from Lincoln Southeast, gave, gave a reading. And so the one thing she wanted was for a variety and a diverse collection of youth to come together. So it wasn't just one school, it wasn't just one ethnicity or one culture being involved. It was a group, a collection of students that got together to celebrate and commemorate the contributions that Dr. King gave, but also call to action the community to move forward um, to see what they could do to, to be better to be better as a community, but also to be better to each other as human beings. All right. Sandy, what is, tell us what's planned for this year's event. I know there's, there's three parts, mm -hmm. so run us, through the, run us through the morning. Well, um, we always start with a pre-rally at the Nebraska Union, where mostly it's just entertainment. So this year, we'll have dancing and singing, and we also have a preschool um, class singing, so that will be fun. And then we'll have a unifying march which carries um, everyone at the pre-rally downtown to the steps of the Capitol. And then we'll start our program from there, which will have different um, pieces from members in the committee and music and videos. And then in the end, we'll have the call to action, which is our big piece, and that will be by Marla. So, All right, and Marla, um, your goal this year to be inspiring education, edu educating and entertaining. Uh, tell us what you hope people will leave the rally with. Um, I really hope people will realize um, that they can make a change. They can like, rise to their highest potential by this rally. Um, it's a, also, you should, like, peop I want people to be educated. It's, it's a good way to educate people, learn something new, and bring it with you. And so with my piece, which is kind of like connection to rising to your highest point, um, it's called Don't You Give Up On You. I really want people to be educated and be inspired by it. Um, basically call them to action with it so they can like learn something new and they can make a change and a difference somehow. All right, now this is called a youth rally, but really all ages can come? All ages, yes. You have something in the program for everyone? Yes, all everybody. Right. All right, uh, Pete, how has the rally changed over the years? You know, I think, you know, in a variety of ways, I think, you know, I've been blessed to kind of see it um, progress because I think when I started this, I didn't even have a child. Um, and I was, we were kind of remembering before that um, I had my daughter first year and they were dragging her through the snow and I'd leave her with a committee member and, and um, now she's actually participating in the rally. But it's grown in the number of people that have attended, but also the directness. Um, the young people have really strengthened the content. Um, as you can see, we don't do a keynote. Um, it mentions a call to action and they really feel that it's important that you know, they call this community to act in whatever ways, whether it's addressing the achievement gap, whether it's addressing injustices to, to, to a, a subgroup that's here in town, or making sure that those that are underrepresented are represented in all aspects and all facets of this community. And so 
I've seen that not only with the numbers growing, but also with the diversity of the attendees. We have, um, it is truly a community event. Um, we've had individuals from all high schools, middle schools, you asked about age of attendees. We promote this as there is something relevant for those four to 90 years of age. Um, and the focus is to educate, um, in inspire, and entertain. And all three of those aspects, I think, are covered during, based on the content of what they put forth in the rally. And so um, rising to your highest point is this year's theme based on Dr. Bullock and what was said at her funeral um, based off a theme called Talitha Kume. And there's a picture of Dr. Yeah. Bullock right there at, yeah. uh, at a previous, uh, this looks like it is at the state capitol. Yeah. Um, tell, tell me, Sandy, how can the community help support this event? Um, they can start by showing up and um, supporting us and just being there and getting others to come. I think um, since uh, we don't have school that day, just to have it a day on and not a day off and hopefully leave being inspired and to um, like activate every day, every 365 days of the year instead of just that one day. So. All right. And Marla, why did you decide to get involved in, in this event? Well, um, ever since my freshman year, I've been going and it's, it's very, like it's a really good um, thing for the community and I really wanted to be involved somehow, help out somehow. And so when I got the chance, I got a hold of Pete and I was like, I really want to do this and I want to <laughs> be involved. And so it's a good way to be educated and be involved in helping out in the community and like showing that uh, that some, it's very important that I care about it. So I wanted to help out. And Sandy, what's the biggest challenge as the chair of the planning committee? Um, I really, there's not that much of a challenge because I have like a great like committee behind me to help me. But I think it's just getting more and more people there of all ages and to show that um, we can be leaders at any age and to, that they can be involved in something like this too. All right. Pete, how, who is in charge of the event? We know that the, the mm -hmm. youth um, organized the event, but is it LPS that's kind of behind the whole right. program? We, we've definitely received a, 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 number of, a, number, a lot of support from a number of different individuals. The city of Lincoln is definitely supported in different ways. Lincoln Public Schools has so graciously allotted me the time to be involved and help facilitate this by donating any kind of space, but also time with the students, and it's has been part of my job description. And so LPS has definitely been a great supporter of federal programs. Um, Thomas Christie in the Office of Multicultural Affairs, Deila Steiner, um, and Josh Kramer, and the entire district has been very supportive. And so those would be the probably the, the key um, the key backers right now. But the Journal Star also underwrites the program and helps us put together that so they don't have you guys those who come to the rally don't have to see my artistic ability <laughs> um, or the youth artistic ability which is which is fantastic but um, you know the, the supporters are countless but Lincoln Public Schools has definitely um, been a long time backer as well as the state but also the city and and the Lincoln Journal Star. All right Dr. King would have turned 81 this year what significance does Dr. King have today for today's youth, Sandy? Um, well, I think his dream continues to live, especially because of programs like this that showcase what he spoke. And I think he inspires us, even though that he's passed away, that his dream lives on and his words still resonate in our mind. So he was a powerful man. So. And Marla, what uh, significance does Dr. King have in your life? Well, he's just inspiring, like, not knowing that he was a reverend before, um, then he became a doctor, and that's not usually normal for most people. It just shows that how important education and how important what we do in this world really does help it out individuals in the world. So he continues to, like, he, like even though he's passed away, he's continued to, like, live on through this world by being a huge inspiration tell people that they can do things and that they can make a difference. All right. You mentioned education. Both of you are you're both seniors mm -hmm. and you're planning where to go after that. Tell us about your future plans. Well, my future plans is I would like to go to a four-year college. Um, I'm not sure where right now, but I've been looking at, like, I got accepted to Dome College and I've been looking at UNL. But um, I would like to major in psychology and minor either in music or English. 
and um, I w like my long my long dream goal is to do paralegal for a little bit and then go to law school and become a lawyer. All right, and and Sandy. Um, well, I'm looking to go to college out of state, so McAllister in Minnesota, University of Michigan, and I want to um, major in chemistry, which will lead me on a pre-med track, and then go to medical school, and then become a physician, but I don't know what kind yet, but we'll see, so. All right, doctors and lawyers, mm -hmm. you must be very proud <laughs> of all those students that you've been involved with over the years. You know, it's, it's, I've truly been blessed to, like I said, just kind of be along for the ride. Um, they truly do all the work. They, they open the doors, you know, they set up, they provide the content, and they do the cleanup. And so, um, you know, all the accolades go to them. And like I said, I get to run around and um, they, they put up with me, <laughs> it's, it's so to say. So. But you get the benefits of all their energy. You know, the benefits of their energy, but also their knowledge um, and their willingness to invest in themselves, but also invest in this community as well. All right, well, if you would like to get energized and commemorate Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, you can attend the Youth Rally in March, and it's Monday, January 17th, which is the official holiday. Many people will have the day off, and of course, these students have the day off from school. Doors open at 8 at the UNL Student Union, and the pre-rally program begins at 8.30. The Youth March will begin at 10 a.m. The march from, will all march from the Union to the State Capitol, and we're hoping for beautiful weather. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Call to Action program starts at 10.30 at the State Capitol, and uh, go out for lunch after that, and then go out in the afternoon to make a difference, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you all very much for being with us today. Thank you. Um, thank you. And uh, good luck with the rally and uh, good luck with your futures. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for joining us for this edition of City Focus.